Great, thank you. I, I appreciate you all uh, allowing us uh, the leeway to do this uh, on the early side here. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Christian Horvath. I am the Redondo Beach Council Member representing District 3. I also serve as the Chair of the South Bay City Council of Governments and as a Director for the largest community choice aggregator in the state, Clean Power Alliance. Today, I am speaking on behalf of both my residents who live within one mile of the plant, as well as the greater sub-regional area. I want to voice my opposition to any extension of the OTC compliance deadline for the AES Redondo Beach. If there has been one aspect about the future of this power plant that I could tell my residents over the past five years with certainty, it was that thanks to the foresight of this body in 2010, the plant would cease to operate as of January 1, 2021. It's incredibly frustrating, especially in a time when environmental regulations are being rolled back consistently at the federal level to consider anything but closure. I just wanna to touch on a few points and I'll let the mayor cover some others. Um, number one, AES is not needed to ensure grid reliability. If you choose to extend the other three plants, there will be more than enough excess capacity in the first year for grid reliability. On top of that, CalISO and the CPUC are not taking into consideration the procurement of storage and a new green generation that Clean Power Alliance is currently working to create. On April 2nd, I made a motion to approve the building of a 100 megawatt Luna battery energy storage project. This is the largest ESA deal for a CCA in California, and it's one of the largest in the entire state. And this is just the first that CPA is working towards in the coming months. This project went from bid to contract execution in less than six months and demonstrates the nimbleness of meeting fast changing regulatory requirements and electrical grid dynamics. The water board should not allow additional year of environmental damage just to use AES Redondo Beach as a safety net. Number two, staff's projected frequency of power plant operation supports not extending the compliance deadline for AES Redondo Beach. Your staff report says that since 2016, all four, plant, all four plants have been primarily used as peakers and operated on an average over the last three years at 4.8 capacity. Any extension would see operations expected to run at or below their current operating capacity. With that expectation, removing the comparatively small AES Redondo Beach should not have an adverse effect on grid reliability. The closure of AES Redondo Beach can easily be covered by the unused 95 plus percent capacity of the larger plants, Alamitos and uh, Ormond. Number three, AES uh, Redondo Beach is the least efficient and the most environmentally damaging of the plants being considered. AES Redondo Beach was built in 1954. It's one of the oldest gas fired plants in California. According to the chart cited by staff, AES Redondo Beach is one of, if not the least efficient plants in all of California, producing more cooling water discharge per unit energy generated than Alamitos, Huntington Beach, and Ormond Beach combined. This results in potential impacts to marine life. There are a handful of other comments that the city has provided you ahead of time through our city attorney, and I'm sure Mayor Brand will, re, uh, will discuss those as well. Thank you very much for allowing us to speak on the early side. I appreciate your time today. I appreciate your advocacy, Mr. Horvath, and thank you again as well for that flexibility and uh, your, your comments. Thank you.